Hi everybody, welcome Mark, welcome. Thanks again for coming in. England, South Africa. One point. Fine, <laughs> margins. Fine margins. Six inches, the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you said there wouldn't be many tries. You got that one. Yeah. And uh, you said six to ten points, uh, conservatively. And if you look at the, the actual game, it should have been ten plus points for the Springboks. I know we say ifs and buts. Uh, the penalty that hit the post at the end, the penalty that should have been that never was. Um, I think you speak about it. Was the right bet? Oh, it was definitely the right bet. I'd make the same bet again a hundred times. That's, I think that's people have a hard time overcoming, is the emotionality to bet. They, they, they attach such emotion to it, and, and there's no emotion for me. I wanted the box to win, and I think it was the right bet. You know, the, 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 things, that I, the things that I've learned this week are, one, Who's captaining the team? I, I like C. I think he's a, he's a good player. He's had a great year. But when you go down, you've got to, one, you've got to kick in front of the posts if that's the worst thing you want to take is the three points. Again, they lost by one point. So this, this, this always wanting to flex your muscles to show how strong you are is just defies logic. It, you, it, if there's a kick in front of the poles, take it. But, but if they didn't do that, why not take the scrum? You've got, you've got a second row, the, the, the number four that's just been sin-binned. You've got complete dominance in the scrum up early on in the game. You take out the second row and you're going to have a penalty try, probably. But you're easily going to push them over. And they decide to go for touch. Who? That to me is just inexcusable and, and, I, and I can't wrap my head around the logic. I thought the game management was very poor and you've got Sia Khaleesi, Dwayne Vermeulen and Warren Whiteley, three Springbok captains. And yeah. you had even Etzman, the Springbok captain, yeah. uh, in the second row. So that leadership group would make that decision, you know, that's not just no, the player that yeah. makes it. No. But you also don't know if it was predetermined uh, by the coaching staff, by Rossi, to say you don't kick for post, you go for the corners. I'm a believer, I always have been in, in scoreboard pressure. Uh, in a test match, especially when you're playing away from home at a place like Twickenham, 3, 6, 9 becomes 12, they start chasing the game. Yeah. The more they keep you out somehow through your own uh, inaccuracy, when they should be 15 points down and it's 8-6, you give them that self-belief, which happened in that test match. We never buried them. I thought we didn't really play, even though we had all that dominance in the first half. Uh, you didn't see Creel in the game. You didn't see uh, Damien Phillips uh, counter-attacking. Uh, there wasn't this effective use of, of our outside backs, yet we had absolute control at, in the collisions, uh, in the set, uh, set piece. And I think maybe that counted against us, the fact that uh, Dear Landy was so comfortably uh, on the front foot at 12 that we kept on going that route and thinking we should go that route, but then we would cough it up with... No, schoolboy errors. Oh, schoolboy errors, yeah. you know, there was no patience at all. And yeah. the box were a better team, they had that dominance. And, uh, you know, they, they'll look at that video and think, how were they not 15, 10, 15 point winners? Uh, yeah, and if I had a crystal ball, the one thing I wouldn't be doing is sitting here with you, with all due respect to you, Mark. If I had a crystal ball, I, I would be somewhere in the Bahamas. If I'm gonna, I, I get 33, three, 33 bets wrong out of 100. I'm gonna get them wrong, so you know, it's like, um, I had one shark fan <laughs> message me, are you now gonna apologize to all the shark supporters? I'm like, what? <laughs> why would I apologize to anybody? If I was gonna apologize to somebody, it'd be the, the, the Western Province fans, you know? The, uh, it just, just amazes me how emotional people get involved in sports. Well, they, they get very emotional and they get very emotional about the outcome. And, uh, and that you either know something about the game or you don't based on the result. Yeah. So we look at probabilities, we look at, an, at, at form, we look at history, and we kind of look at the trends in the week. Yeah. Uh, betting, is, betting is the science of probable outcomes. Yeah, and then, uh, and then the, and the margins are, when you've got two teams that are fairly equal strength, the margins could be a point or three points. I go back to the, the All Black uh, Test match. You know, Bowden Barry hits the post twice. He misses four kicks. Uh, they score six tries. Probability says the All Blacks at home scoring six tries don't lose a test match. Yeah. It's never happened. So, yeah. I got the same people you guys know, know nothing, okay? Sonny Bull Williams gets sent off in a test match. You don't, your, your probability is not for a red card in the 20th minute. Yeah. Uh, and the Lions sneak a win. Uh, you know, it's the, that third test as well. Penalty gets turned around. It's a drawn test because the referee says, they both deserve it. Yeah. You know, so it's it's again we look at the officiating with uh, with Farrell as much as the. But how, but how does how does Angus Angus Gardner referee at, at an international level? Well, how do so many of them referee? And this is my big thing with world rugby. 
if you go back to that New Zealand uh, British and Lions uh, series, it was the most controversial call. The penalty was given and it was overturned because the touch judge intervened. Uh, and history shows it's a drawn series now. History shows England won by a point. There was absolutely no arms. There was no defence of that with Owen Farrell. And uh, well, that's my that's, that leads me to my other lesson. I think Rassi Erasmus has the best sense of humour I've ever witnessed for a rugby coach. His, his handling this week of, of one, the press conference where, you know, he, he, he said that, uh, you know, no, we're going to, that's a good way to tackle. You know, it stopped uh, Lester Hazen dead in his tracks. He didn't say that exactly, but I mean, he, the point was proven. And then that tackle bag video, I, I can't remember laughing that, and, that hard. And I think what he highlighted in that, when how low Estros went, middle he went, just how high the third one was yes. and how illegal it was and just not leading with an arm, but leading with the shoulder. Well, people tend to forget what the Farrell thing is. If he had come in from the other side with his left arm, that's fine and the shoulder makes contact, but there was never an intent to even put his, his arm no. down. It was, worst case scenario, just a straight up penalty. The fact that he asked to look at it. So well, he, he, didn't, have, he didn't ask to look at it initially. I mean, I think he was, he did, his, the TM, touch, his yeah, touch judge touch said you need to look at it. And then, and then it was almost as if he, he had a bet on the game himself. He, he said, no, I've seen it, I'm happy I with mean, it. Yeah, and How when you look at it, come it on. just becomes worse and worse the more you look at it. I've never and seen such a short amount of time taken to, in making that decision, in making a decision like that. It was disgraceful. And, well, he, and he has been a disgrace. He was a disgrace in Mendoza. He wasn't particularly good even at, at Loftus, okay, in the way he managed the game. I don't think he's a very good referee. No. And the big gripe I have with World Rugby and the governing bodies is there's never accountability to referees. There's never consequence. So if he makes a mistake, ax him. Uh, but you can't say this is a professional game that has integrity when too many human error decisions are allowed yeah. to kind of go unpunished. Uh, you know, and it's and it's not the first time, and it's not going to be the last time. And, we can't no, and it's not even debatable. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 nobody in their right mind could debate that this wasn't an illegal tackle. You know, it, it, it was it was what everybody saw. And it goes back to what you said, the emotion that goes with sport and how people are one-eyed when they look at it. So everyone in England is saying, fair, solid hit. Really? If that had been the South African knocking over the English player and it wasn't awarded, you, it's it's like when... when uh, when Wayne Barnes killed New Zealand in the quarterfinal, the South Africans said, suck it up and move on, you were beaten. When Bryce Lawrence killed South Africa in 2011 in the quarterfinal, the New Zealand said, suck it up and move on, it's just a game. But if you are not getting your officiating right, it can't just be, then it must be an amateur sport. If you're going to be a professional sport, commands massive sponsorships, determines livelihoods of people, you can't have that human error. Uh, you can't allow it to prosper and so have such an easy disregard for it. And um, and I, you know, I think, uh, you know, Look, he, the thing with Gardner, sorry, Mark, is that he never asked the opinion of the, the, the video referee. Never asked for it. Now, what, what is that guy there for? Yeah, and I mean, he's viewed from the, from the field on a big screen, which is 100 meters away. Yeah. Where well, the other guy's looking at it from every angle they can tell him that according to the law, he broke every law there. Yeah. There was no harm. But Gardner and didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear that. He said, no. he, I, he's comfortable that he made an, 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 an his, his, no. his intent wasn't malice and he made an effort. So now so we're, we're in agreement. Dickhead of the, of the week was Gardner. Dickhead of the year has been Gardner. <laughs> okay. you know? And again, it really just, it was a dishonest call from a referee at the most critical juncture. Yeah. Now, before all the millennials out there fall asleep, because you know that their attention span isn't that great. Um, let's, let's move on to this week. France, South Africa. Paris, the city of love, it will be kind to us. <laughs> yeah, city of love. Um, for me, three and a half points is the spread. Again, the box, a uh, thousand rand on the box to win by four more. France are two wins, one draw, and 12 losses in the last 15 games. They lose, they're conceding 30.75 points a game and scoring about 18 over that 15 game period. The one draw, interesting enough, was against Japan um, at home, 23-23, I think it was. And, um, and Japan had the chance to win it with the last kick of the game. Yeah. So that could have been another defeat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. And, and um, the, the, France is just not good enough. As, as we talked about earlier on, they're eighth and ninth in the world in rankings. 
um, they don't have, I think you, you're telling me you phoned one of your friends in France and asked them how for, how's it going to go. And yeah, I spoke to the editor of uh, the record of L'Equipe. Uh, uh, millennials won't know what that is. And, uh, it's, it's the French Sporting National Daily. And I said, are you going to win on Saturday? He said, no. Emphatically, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> what kind of question is that? I think people also give France such a regard because they've knocked over New Zealand twice in World Cup history. And, you know, they've, they've beaten New Zealand 12 times out of 61, they, yeah. yet they call uh, their New Zealand's bogey team. I would say maybe New Zealand's their bogey team, because uh, New Zealand's yeah. 49 of them. We've, we've knocked them over so much, we won six in a row, we've, we've, and we are particularly good when we play in Paris. We seem to enjoy that city, enjoy the start of France, and it's got that wonderful resonance to 2007, where we played World Cup semi-final and final there, and we had that fantastic group win against uh, England, 36-0. Yeah. As you said, I think the Bok team, is a, is an improving team they're a good side they need to just understand attention to detail the basics have a bit more patience in their game and if they're patient in paris and they play with the desperation that they did at lofters and in wellington uh, they should win comfortably by 10 points plus yeah i i think that as well I, um 10 points plus but um you never know <laughs> it's a funny shape ball but that's my bet. A thousand rand to, to win back 1900 that South Africa win by by four or more points. Uh, next game, England versus New Zealand. Yep, the most anticipated game a year ago when England were riding high 18 in a row. They tried to change that Barbarians match to make England against, uh, against New, Zealand. New Zealand. And uh, Eddie Jones and them all said, New Zealand's not as good as they think though, and Steve Hansen said, thank God, we've got another year to practice to get it right. <laughs> uh, it seems to be a little bit of a non-event because every, in the sense that everyone's talking Ireland, New Zealand, the week later. But there's also something special about any visit to Twickenham uh, to play against the old enemy. And even though they've only won seven out of 41 against the All Blacks, it's been rare that the All Blacks have gone there and smashed them. It tends to be this very messy, six to 12 points. I yeah. Think. Dan Carter came out and he said, comfortable, 12 points. They're too fast for England. He said they're too conditioned and they won't stay with them in the last 15 minutes. But, but the problem with that is that, 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 that some, some rain predicted all day for Saturday and Friday and Sunday, in a, in a typical London weather. So it, that is a bit of an equalizer in terms of, in terms of uh, the advantage that the All Blacks would have on a clear sunny day. There is, and uh, again, so the two factors I'd look at there would be guaranteed New Zealand's going to get a card during that game at some stage. And Bowden Barrett, as well as he's kicked, he's kicked 11 out of 12 in the last three test matches. If it's raining at Twickenham, you know, I wouldn't put too much confidence in Bowden Barrett kicking six out of six when it really, really does matter. It, he's shown a bit of vulnerability against the box in that Lions series where he missed crucial time. So I saw in the papers people were saying he's getting an un unfair tag of not being able to kick under pressure but he's he has shown uh, frailty in big moments and the other times when he kicks so well the team's been up by 15 20 points the pressure's not quite there so i still have the all blacks to win but yeah. but i don't think it's going to be as convincing as uh, as a lot of people think 20 points plus hmm. i think they will battle a bit uh, the england pack is a much more improved one than the, with courtney laws back uh, than the one that played against against us England get up for the, for the I mean, England, this, this is their World Cup. They've been waiting four years for this. For the, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I think they will give a good account of themselves. I think there's too much class on the All Black side uh, to lose it. Um, but it's not, I'd be surprised, uh, you know, you said the book is at 11 and a half. Yeah, that's a, but that's my, that's my worry. Is at the beginning of the week, the book, the New Zealand were favored by 11 and a half points. Now they're favored by 14 and a half. So obviously the, the, the money's been flowing in on, on New Zealand. And at 11 and a half, I would have been tempted to, to, to put a bet down. I didn't. Um, and at uh, 14 and a half, that's, that's over two converted tries. Yeah. You know, England will want to slow that game down. I don't see a lot of tries. Um, and I could easily see it being a 25 10 game. You know, I don't think England get, if you, I don't see England getting past 15, 16 points. And that's where I might look on the weekend in trading just for the kickoff to see how many points. The bookies have said England will score, and if it's anywhere around 17 or 18, then I'll be a seller at that. So, so watch out for that, folks. You can get that bet as well. But being Welsh, the game I'm looking forward to, obviously, is Australia Wales. 13 in a row. What is it about that Australian team that the Welsh just can't knock over? 
because there's been such good Welsh teams in the last few years that you think Australia goes into at the end of the year. That's a gimme for, for Wales. And you find Wales 26-6 down. And then this will make or, a miraculous or, recovery. Or you'll find Wales 26-21 26, 26, 20, 20, 20, up. Yeah. And then <laughs> With they, no time on the clock and then we give it away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's been amazing that psychologically you just get this this feeling that they just can't knock over Australia, that maybe there's a technical aspect or cleverness about the way Australia plays, because they don't get confrontational with the Welsh, where South Africa and New Zealand does, and Wales love that physical thing. That there is, I just think that the, the Australian backs are, are technically very much superior to the Welsh backs, and that the Welsh pack's not dominant enough to kind of snuff Australia out the game. And I just think that that Australian backline, Kirkley Beal, Falau, the likes of those players, will still be very influential. Yeah, uh, the book is. You out. know, look look at the, the Australia Argentina and what Australia did to Argentina coming back. And Australia treat Wales the same way. They don't fear playing them. They respect them. Who doesn't respect Welsh rugby, except for New Zealand, I imagine. Um, we can't beat Australia. We in 13 games we haven't beaten them. We we and we've had better teams than this. Um, we'll give a good account of it, but the, the thing I like, and this is where people, you know, maybe should understand the lack of emotionality. When I look at a bet like New Zealand, the underdogs this weekend, I'm betting on the underdogs because they shouldn't be the underdogs. It should be even money, but they're 12 to 10. You're getting an extra 20% return on your money. And that's what you got to look at as a value bet. So I'm going to put a thousand down on Australia. Uh, to win uh, for fund number two, for 12, uh, to win 2200 and hope like hell that I lose the bet because as you know I'm, I'm Welsh through and through and, uh, and uh, we'll be cheering for, for Wales. I'll be cheering against the bet but emotionally I have no connection. At least if, I, if, if Wales win I, I can celebrate and if they don't then I'll make a bit of money on, uh, on the side but, uh, and that's where you've got to divorce you know um, if, you, if you're a real punter and you want to learn how to punt you know, you can't say, oh, I'll never bet against the box. Oh, I'll never bet against this. Some, sometimes you have to. <laughs> I'm not going to bet on, on, on New Zealand. Yeah, I'd say New Zealand want to avoid. If you, yeah. if you avoid. kind of like giving insights to, to the punter out there. Unless, Australia, unless, Australia, the, unless, the, unless the weather doesn't do what it's predicted to do. And it, it is a clear, beautiful day in London. But I don't think, you know, I also have friends in London who tell me how the weather is around that area and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. But now, I, I'm, uh, I'm avoiding the, the England game. I'll watch it as a spectacle, as, 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 as I love sports. Uh, the box by four or more. And that'll be a tough game. Man. I, you know, it's, I don't know how... Like last week I was incredibly confident that the box were going to win by 10 plus, 6 to 10. This week, I don't know, four. Four is a good handicap, but South Africa should come home. The pick of the week, the, an Australian win. For value, yeah, yeah, but to me, the, the, the more certain in terms of, I think that the, the, the France are uh, not a good side. South Africa are an improving side. They're a better team now than when they played them here and beat them. Remember when they played them here, they beat them by 20 plus three times, yeah. and that was under Alistair. Um, so it should be should it should be a victory for 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 the box. New Zealand will win, but 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 I'm not confident by how much. And uh, Australia off the value against Wales, but I'm hoping for a Wales victory. And then let's not forget to watch the big gap match against, against Kenya and Germany. It's Angus Gold has got that one. Does he have that one? <laughs> so he should have. Can I, really? I didn't even know that. I mean, I'll see if I don't think there's any betting on that. But yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll be glued to the set. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Mark, and thanks, everybody. Cheers.